in treating lung cancer. I think the challenges that exist are uh, still, despite all these new advances, patients die uh, from the disease. And if you look at uh, how the field has evolved, um, we were talking a few years ago about personalized therapy with targeted drugs. Uh, and then we learned, unfortunately, that cancers learn how to become resistant to these targeted drugs, and now we have to develop second and third generation um, drugs to target these mutations that we know. But if you look at uh, the pie chart that was presented by one of the speakers of the known mutations, you will, you will notice that the known targetable mutation represent a minority of patients. Now, the majority of patients don't have mutations that can be targeted. In addition to that, you know, if you look at adenocarcinomas, 30% of patients have RAS mutations, and RAS mutations so far have not been successfully targeted. So one of the challenges is to develop um, new targets, to, to discover new targets, and to develop drugs to treat those targets. Uh, and you know, I think that hopefully it will come a day where 100% of patients you'll be able to identify a drug that can treat. Uh, the other challenges that we face is to control some of the toxicities of the therapies that we have. Uh, and so we heard a little bit about the EGFR, TKI toxicities and how the newer agents are, are controlling this. And then the, the last thing is where, not, the, not necessarily the last thing, but one other, one other point is, you know, we now have a successful strategy with immunotherapy, but, but immunotherapy works in about 20% of patients. So we need to understand who can get what to optimize the success. And that to me is a big is a big area that needs development. We heard that every company that is developing uh, an anti-PD-1 has a companion test, but none of these companion tests are perfect. Uh, so I think there's still a lot of work to be done, but certainly lung cancer is a much more exciting area than, uh, than what it used to be.